Hello, I'm Josh from the UK OSINT community and founder of OSINT Praxis. And in today's video, we'll be looking at Notepad++. This has been a very useful application for me over the years. Even though now, lots of people will use AI for certain tasks instead of using things like Notepad++. However, it is still very important to know about applications like this, because you never know when an AI might fail you. And there's even other reasons too, like sometimes using Notepad++ yourself might actually save you time. Sometimes, especially accounting for the mistakes that AI often makes, Notepad++ might actually help saving you time with certain small tasks. There's also a security element where you might not want to put that data into an AI, so instead you could store it locally on Notepad++. So let's get straight into the video. This will be quite a basic one, just to show you some of the functionalities and capabilities of Notepad++, so that you're aware of what's there and how that might be able to be introduced into your workflows, or at least if you have an investigation in the future, it might spark an idea that you can use it for. So let's get into it. So here we have Notepad++. There's a few different use cases and examples we'll be going through to showcase lots of the features and functionalities within this. For example, there's many things up in the edits, like line operations that you can do, different bookmark operations, there's different macros and plugins, and we'll go through all of that. But let's start off with an example from the Wayback Machine, where you may already be aware of this URL here where it allows us to get every URL that the Wayback Machine is aware of for a particular website. In this case, the CIA.gov domain. So if I go onto the browser and enter this URL, that is going to take us into the Wayback Machine and it's going to give us just a basic text return of all of the URLs. You can see that at the top it is still loading because there's so many URLs, that's going to continue to load until they're all loaded in. Sometimes when you have that, there may be other ways. If you do want to make sure you get every single URL, you can use things like Windows PowerShell to load that in more effectively. But just as an example for Notepad++, I'm going to copy and paste every one that is currently being shown to us. So what you can do is do Control A, and Control A is going to copy everything on the current page. And you can do that on any web page. And it's typically the select all shortcut across any application. And now Control C to copy this. Go back to Notepad++. And if we open up a new one, we can Control V to paste. And there's 52,000 URLs here currently. But the CIA has hundreds of thousands of URLs on their domain if you wait longer. And now that you've got these here, you can start doing different find operations using Control F. So Control F brings up this find function, and now you'll be able to run whatever you want. So for example, if we put it on normal mode, we can do a search for .pdf, and we find different PDF documents here. And if we count, we can see that there's 297 matches, and that's just in these initial 52,000 including the .pdf. So you can click through all of those. There's also this find all in current document where it will open up this at the bottom showing you just the lines which have a match for your search term. And you can always again do control A to select all of these and then copy and paste those out so that you only have the matching lines. What we can also do in relation to that that might be an easier method for you to copy those out, but what we can also do is go into Control F and go to the Mark section, and this is how you bookmark lines. So if you want to bookmark, make sure you have that selected, and mark all. This is going to mark all of the lines which have .pdf in them. And you can see it's added these blue circles next to the lines which have .pdf. Once those are bookmarked, what we can do is go to search, bookmark, and now you have the freedom of what you want to do. You can remove the bookmarked lines, but in this case, if we want to keep the PDF ones, we instead want to remove the non-bookmarked lines. And as you can see, if I go over, 
that has now cut out those 52,000 URLs down to just the, I think, 200, yeah, 294 URLs that actually have .pdf in them. And you could do that with any file type. You could bookmark the PDFs, then type in .pptx for PowerPoint presentations and then bookmark those. And then only when you're done bookmarking everything, you could remove all the other lines. So you're left with just file types. And there's other ways to make that a bit easier as well. For example, using the regular expression, you could always get AI or if you know regex yourself, you could make a query that automatically will go out and bookmark all of the different file types that you're interested in. You could get AI to give you all of the file types that might be of interest. For example, email exports or PowerPoint documents, Word documents, PDFs, JSON files, all of these different types is what you could search for in one go using the regex and then mark all of those lines and then do that technique that we just did to get rid of all the other ones. Then you're left from the hundreds of thousands of URLs for a particular website, you're left with just the ones which are actually more interesting to go out and look into further. Now let's go on to a new example where here we have some test data from a CSV file, which just means that everything is separated by a comma. For example, the first name, last name, email, and so on is all separated by a comma. So there's many different things that we'll be able to do with a Notepad++ here. Let's start with some of the very basics. You might want to standardize this data. For example, it may need to be all in uppercase or all lowercase. That could help when you're using it in certain tools, especially if you make Python tools or something like that. So what you can do is control A to select all, or you can always do it with a more specific selection, but I'm going to select all, right click, and then straight away here, you can very easily make it all uppercase, as you can see here, or all lowercase. So it's very easy and quick to do that. That's honestly one of the most used things for me with a Notepad++ because it's just so quick and easy to do that. What we can also do is we can replace these different delimiters and the separators to whatever we want. If you wanted to change that to something else, we can just go back to the find and replace, go to the replace part. Now we can make it find every instance of a comma in this document and change it with something else that we want. Let's change this back to normal search mode. And let's say I wanted it to be two pipe characters. We can now replace all. And you see that every comma in that entire page has now been replaced with the two pipe characters. So it's very quick and easy to do that as well. Now, something we can also do in relation to the regex we covered previously. And we also recently made a video separately about regex. So we'll link that down in the description if you want to learn more about what that is. But as a quick example, with these dates of birth here, let's say we wanted to change the format. It's very easy to do that here. Again, that's something that AI might do easily now as well. But just for the sake of showing you the functionality, because you might find other use cases for this as well, is where we can go to regular expression and I'm just going to go through the history so you can see that. And this is just a very basic query where it's searching for numbers or digits and four of them. So that is going to be the year. It then is searching for a hyphen and then two digits, hyphen and two digits. So it's only searching for this specific pattern. It won't match anything else like the emails because it's not looking for letters. It's specifically looking for numbers in this format. And if we go to the replace tab, this is where it gets a bit more powerful because we have the normal brackets around each part. Those are basically cr creating capturing groups that we can reference when we replace text with other things. So let's say we don't want the year, month, day. We want day, month, year. What you can do is use the dollar signs, like dollar sign three is going to access the value from this third capturing group. And then number two is going to be capturing the month and number one is capturing the year. 
So now because we're putting it in this new order, three, two, one, separated by a forward slash, when we go to replace all, you can see that now it's completely replaced the format for every single line. So it's very quick and easy to do that, even with very large files. That is another benefit of this, by the way, is that it might not always allow you to put such large and complex data sets into AI. Sometimes it might, but other times you might struggle with that. But this will allow you to do it with very large data sets. And before we move on from this example, I quickly want to reference the macros up here. Because this is something that I actually haven't used too much myself, but I've realized recently how useful this can be. Because let's go back to this example where I've just done control Z to undo. So we've got our old date formats back. If I go to control F again and the replace and I go down on the numpad so that it loads up the previous regex query. Now what we can do is go to macro and start recording. And that's going to be looking at everything you now do in notepad plus plus and it's recording every action that you do not like a video, but it will record every actual action you take so that it can replay that next time when you run the same macro again. So as an example, let's go back to the replace. Now we've got the values in for our query that we want to match and we've got what we want to replace it with. So I'll click replace all, it does it. And now we go back to macro and stop recording. Now we can go down to save the current recorded macro and we'll just call it replace date. And you can set a hotkey for that if you'd like. Now, if I undo this, so you'll see that we now have the old version of our dates. And now all you have to do is go to macro, click replace date, and it's automatically done that same action again because it was recorded and it's done that without us needing to type in the query again. So it just allows you to do things a lot more quickly if you have those kind of workflows within Notepad++ that you do regularly. Now let's go on to the last example. Here we have a list of fake phone numbers and we might want to manipulate how these look a little bit. For example, if we were going to be putting these into some kind of automation tool, we likely would want them to be in the international format and not like they are right now. So there's a few different things that we could do. You could potentially just find and replace all of the brackets and remove those and then do the other ones and so on. But we can also do things quite unique that you can't do in other notepad applications. For example, let's say that I wanted to just click here and drag down only covering the bracket and the space. Usually, as with every notepad application, if I click here and drag down, it's going to drag all of the rest of the line and things like that. But in Notepad++, what you can do is hold down Shift and Alt and drag down like this. And now it's not doing that same thing anymore. It's only covering the lines that we actually want. So now we can just remove that and it removes both of those from every line without affecting the rest of the text on the other lines. So that can be really useful and you can see it's still selected there. So we can even type in other text along that on every single line. And that's come in useful for me over the years in many different use cases. So hopefully you can think of some ways to use it in your workflows as well. Let's go back here. Uh, let's say we wanna get rid of this bracket here as well. You don't have to drag it down automatically. You can just come down to the bottom, hold shift and alt and click and that selects only that line as well. Now we can do the same thing. And there we go. And likewise, let's say we wanted to add in the international code. You can just click at the start, go to the bottom, shift alt and click. And now we can type in plus one and we have plus one at the start of every single phone number. So that's very useful there. Another, th another thing I quite like is that if you click on something and it exists somewhere else, you'll see that it actually highlights the other matches just by double clicking on it. It shows you where else it is in that document. 
And here you can see that we do unfortunately have some duplicate phone numbers. So what you would be able to do here is very simply go up to edit line operations and just remove the duplicate lines. And that has now gone and removed all of those extra duplicates we have. So now you can see if I click on these, there's no other ones showing up or highlighting, there's no other matches, it's gotten rid of all of those. And finally, before we end off the video, let's say that you did now want to put this into some kind of tool, or maybe let's imagine that these were IP addresses instead of phone numbers. You might want to have those in one single line, comma separated, to be able to put into Shodan or some other kind of client tool. So what you'd be able to do is just select all, which again, we can do control A and select all of them, and then just do control J and control J is going to join the lines and put them all onto one line with a space to separate them. And then we can just go and highlight the space, go to the find and replace, and then we can change it to a comma, replace all. Now we have all of those values on the same line separated by a comma instead of having a file full of different values on a new line. And that's it for this video. Please feel free to leave a comment with any feedback and what videos you might want to see next. Also, any ways that you currently use Notepad++ or possibly new ideas that you now have off the back of this video. If you want to get more involved in the OSINT community and the UK OSINT community, we'll leave links below to join as a free member so you can interact in our Slack and Discord channels. Also, it would be great to see you at some of our upcoming events. The next one we have is on December 11th in London with lots of great speakers, as you can see here. The event is Crypto Christmas, so it would be great to see you there. We'll leave all the links below for you to look into those, and I'll see you in the next video.